Um, and today, we are fortunate enough to have Lauren Stites here with us today. Um, she's the Associate Director of Engineering Career Services, and she will be here to talk to us about um, your summer in LinkedIn. ready to connect with people, employers. All right, not bad. Well done. So, I'm just going to stay back here in my own little happy space. Sure. Okay, and I'm back. Welcome. All right, so LinkedIn. Some of you have it. Is there anyone who doesn't have it yet? Or you've considered it, but or you don't know why it's important to me. Okay, a few brave souls are being honest. So, why does LinkedIn matter to me? Why should it matter to you? Why is it worth the time? Why is it worth the one more thing that you need to be updating and connecting with? And here are just a few of them. So, certainly, LinkedIn can be a tool for professional development. It can be a tool for you to be able to get glean advice from. You can certainly see job opportunities on there. You can network. We'll talk a little bit about how to do that and when. It's information sharing, not only from you that you're sharing your information, but employers are sharing information as well. You can be intentional with how you're finding out that information and of research as well. 53% of LinkedIn members surveyed reported that networking efforts contributed to their success in obtaining a job. And we'll show some numbers in a little bit that will also show you the number of recruiters who are being intentional with, with that networking effort as well. So it is a great place, particularly when you are in kind of this career search that you're connected. But LinkedIn, you can't build a network overnight necessarily. I mean, you can start your network, but it is one of those things that you have to be continually intentional of developing so that when you find yourself in the job market, or when you decide, I need a new, I'd like to look for a new opportunity, that those networks have already been established. If you're waiting until career fair to start building your network, we'll say, then you might almost be a little too late because it doesn't necessarily, we have to have a couple, dom you know, you've got to like tip the domino to start to have that effect. So, this is just something that's interesting as far as, again, the average number of companies that each group work for. Certainly you can see a, most, a more recent grad has, you know, up to five years post-grad, and then just showcasing that your LinkedIn profile, while you may not necessarily find it very, you might feel like, well, I have it, I'm doing the work, I'm updating it, I'm not necessarily seeing a ton of results from it. As you continue to build that network, as you continue to build your career network, you will probably start to see that it's going to pay off in higher dividends the longer you can in your workforce and the more you build those connections. The difference between LinkedIn and your resume. So this is a question that sometimes students will ask because of the fact that a lot of times they were duplicating some of the information. But LinkedIn should be different than your resume. Your profile should not only be copy and paste. And I say that because your resume, you are limited. There's real estate that you're allowed, and for undergraduates, it's one page. How many of you are graduate students in the room? Or, or beyond? Graduate or beyond. Okay, so for you, for graduate students, or for those who have, are currently in the workforce and have been there for, for some time, you are able to have a one to two page resume, or you know, up to two pages. But for all my undergraduates, there's, you're really not the exception to the rule of, a one, of more than one page. So just kind of keeping that in mind. However, LinkedIn doesn't have a page limit. So you, if you're feeling, you know, I want to tell them all the things that I've done, LinkedIn is a place where you can do that. 
If you are a freshman um, and currently interning, then you can have your high school information on LinkedIn. That might still be relevant. As a sophomore, for your resume, we're going to start to say you need to be fading out that experience. But if you have some really strong experiences that you're not ready to give up, you don't necessarily have to give those up yet as on your LinkedIn account. So you can be building those affiliations and even networking, connecting with those people, whether it's from high school that have went to different institutions. Certainly classmates can be a place where you're connecting and building your network. But remember too that your LinkedIn is a professional social media, not a, um, not a personal. So keeping that in mind, we're not necessarily we're going to be intentional with who we're connecting with. Of course, your LinkedIn allows you to validate your skills through skills and endorsements. Also allows you to easily share companies or industries you're interested in. This is really valuable for you if you're not aware because employers can also filter jobs. They can be filter filtering job seekers based on those who are following them. So if I have a job posting, and I, let's say I'm the employer, and I'm saying I'm looking for a mechanical engineer for an intern, and I want them to have, and I'm cut, you know, listing certain criteria on my back end, I can then also say, click a box that says, and it's already following me. So for those maybe top 10 companies who you're already, who, who are your top to, in your top 10 list, making sure that you're not only connecting with them by going to career fairs and connecting with them on Handshake, but that LinkedIn is a place where you're following them. LinkedIn is a huge tool for you as well as far as for figuring out what are the employers interested in. Many employers are act actively engaged on LinkedIn. They're sharing information that they want people to know about, so it's a great talking point when you are in that networking environment, like a career fair, to be able to say, oh yeah, I just recently, I follow you on LinkedIn, I saw you recently shared this, can you tell me more about that? And so that can be a way to be doing that. Resume again, due to the fact that it is limited in real estate for that one page for most of you, you do have to focus on the most relevant experience. You do have to have, sometimes have fewer details. We are really trying to pack those bullet points on your resume with as much content and being impactful as we can, but we don't get a chance to write a paragraph. We don't get to say that the favorite part of my internship experience this past summer was X. And that's something that you can share on LinkedIn. Your LinkedIn shouldn't necessarily be copy-paste of what you've done on your resume. Resume intention should be bullet points. Your LinkedIn can be more about telling your story. What did you like most about your internship? Were you focused on working with a team and engaged in, those, in a team environment? And so it can be more of, you can have a little bit more of those eyes or we's that we wouldn't typically see on a resume. So what does it mean to have an updated profile? I asked you this in the beginning and many of you had your hand up that yes, your profile is updated. Here are just a few things that I want you to kind of take a mental note of that if you don't have them, that you want to consider doing. So number one is a professional headshot. And if you don't currently have one, you'll actually be able to get them for free when you come to the career fair in the fall because we have a boot, a photographer who we have come to be able to offer you that professional headshot and it's for free. So you don't have to pay purchase one. Clear descriptions and information under each section heading is important as well so that they know what you've done. Again, similar to that resume bullet point, but maybe with a little bit more detail. Customizing your profile for your URL is important. So when you first look at your LinkedIn profile, there's the, your link, but it, it runs on with multiple numbers. But you can customize that to just maybe it's your last name or whatever you like. Again, keep it professional. Um, so not sassy123, but keeping it professional maybe with your last name or something there. And then again, this is a place where you can have your skills endorsed. So whether that's through fellow classmates who perhaps were working on a team with you, from your um, managers who you've been working with this past summer, those are all ways where you can be getting endorsements from those. The other advantage of LinkedIn is that you're able to be building your social capital. And do any of you know what I mean by that? So social capital, an example of that would be that I'm taking this class this fall because my friend told me that I need to take this advisor or I need to have this professor because they're really good. Social capital is similar to your networking. It's being able to get 
information from others, and that can be both professional setting with employers, also personal setting from your classmates or friends, but it's building that social capital through social media, basically. It doesn't Sometimes it can be more personal, but it can also be through social media channels. So, how can I use LinkedIn, or how are you currently using LinkedIn? One of the, probably, so we offer in Engineering Career Services, we offer LinkedIn reviews, so that's one thing. If you're looking at your, your LinkedIn profile, you think it looks pretty good, but you'd like to get a second opinion, we're happy to be that for you. But um, one of the tough questions I probably get from students when they do come in to talk to us is whether or not they need LinkedIn Premium. If you're actively engaged in your LinkedIn, if you aren't currently a premium user, it's probably an email you get from time to time. Ooh, 30 days free, LinkedIn Premium. Just join here. Do you need it? Are you going, you know, is it going to, students ask me, do I need to have this feature? I think that LinkedIn Premium, from a personal standpoint, can be a great feature as far as for providing you with additional information, but it's not going to get you the job. So, if you feel like this is the tool that you're going to be intentional for using and that you're going to spend time in this resource, can it add value? Yes. Is it going to guarantee that you get a job through LinkedIn? No. So if you already, you know, for me personally, I would almost probably encourage that you really focus your attention, the, uh, attention is my word apparently for today, your intention, uh, intentional with getting on Handshake, seeing who's coming on campus, Connecting to the employers who are already looking for you. That's one advantage of Handshake. Handshake, those employers are posting, they're selecting the schools they want to. So even though they might intend, they might have you go to their website to apply, they have been they have chosen Illinois as candidates that they want to see. So that's an advantage for you. You don't necessarily get that from the LinkedIn platform. However, there are plenty of opportunities that employers are posting on LinkedIn. So it is an additional tool that I would recommend that you use, but don't miss out on the opportunities that are literally at your, at your front door, at the ARC, at maybe even in your classes where employers are coming to talk to you. So just keeping those, this is a tool. This is not the one and only tool you use, but it can be a very valuable tool for you. One way it's a valuable tool is to be able to connect with your alumni. So if you aren't currently following or have joined the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign group on LinkedIn, I would recommend that you do so. You can use filters through LinkedIn, and that's a way where you can even filter based on when were the recent graduates, where are they working. You can then kind of do some, some digging, some sleuthing. So be cautious as well with LinkedIn, because you can certainly fall into the rabbit hole of Ooh, like who are these majors and where did they go? And suddenly it's two hours later and you don't know what happened. So be careful with that, but it's a great way for you to start to figure out well, who do I want to connect with? Especially for those of you who are feeling like, I need to build a network, but I don't have a network to build with. Maybe you don't have friends or necessarily family members who are in the industry you're interested in. You can find those people through your alumni. And oftentimes alumni are willing to give back. They want to talk to others who are kind of who are in the similar shoes where they once were just a few short years ago or longer. And so that's something that I would encourage you to build. Following companies, groups, or people. Again, we talked about this a little bit in the sense that employers can see who's following them. So keeping in mind that you want to be intentional, there's that word again, with following your companies. Also then joining groups. So any RSO or you know, professional organization you're affiliated with, you can be connecting with them on LinkedIn as well. And this is again, as recruiters are looking at your profile, they can kind of see a full picture of who you are, how you're investing your time, and what are, what's important to you. This doesn't have to only be RSOs. So those student organizations are great, but if you have a strong connection with other volunteer organizations that you're affiliated with, those can absolutely be connected to. This is a great place for you to be able to showcase that. We talked about customizing your LinkedIn profile already, making sure that it's more professional certainly is one way. They can automatically see kind of that you're in the know of what to do, but it also just makes it a lot easier as far as if you choose to share that on your resume. Now, keep in mind that once you share any kind of outside link on your resume, it's kind of fair game for a recruiter to look at. 
So if your resume, if you choose to put your LinkedIn account on your resume, I think there's two important things you need to keep in mind. One, do not assume that they're going to go to your LinkedIn page, and so your resume doesn't have to look that good, because well, they'll look at my LinkedIn, and then they're going to be amazed. So that's one piece. And two, don't assume, so the number one piece recruiters are looking at is your resume. LinkedIn is a supplemental piece that they can then also go look at. So if you choose to list it, you also need to be aware that they could very well go and look at it. So you need to make sure that both pieces complement each other and that it's up to date. If you already know, I'm not going to have the time in the next three weeks before classes start to update my LinkedIn profile. And so if there's one thing I need to focus on, I'm going to focus on my resume. I'm going to leave the LinkedIn off for now then I think that's completely fine. But again, if you're using this, if you're using LinkedIn as a tool for recruitment, it does need to be up to date. So it does need to have your most recent internship experience. It does need to make sure that you're, again, those affiliations or the partnerships that you're a part of those, that they're on there. So just making sure that when they look at it, it's the most recent version of new you, not the three years old version of you. Skills endorsement as well, we talked about these. So making sure that you're taking the opportunities not only to ask for endorsements, perhaps, by classmates that you've worked with, but that you're giving them as well. And that you also list your skills on your profile, and again, that you update them. This is a place where throughout, in that profile page or headline, you can even be emphasizing particular skills that you know your recruiters are looking for. Now, Another avenue that you can be using LinkedIn for is to be getting information. So job information is one place. Many employers are, are very focused on letting people know who, what opportunities they're hiring for through LinkedIn. So this is, and sometimes they're going to have like Amazon, for example, in the middle has the meet Matt and kind of gives a description of who he is and the work he's doing. And then it also talks about though that, hey, if you want more opportunities, go here. I have heard of some companies who only post certain, especially maybe more tech or dev positions on LinkedIn because they want those people that are already in this platform or who are using those features. So that can be another place where this can be a great resource. Again, to follow those companies can be helpful because they're going to start to show up on your feed. You won't have to be as purposeful to go find them because they're already going to start showing up. So just another re reason why you should be following employers. It can also be helpful for you to use LinkedIn as far as research before an interview. So this might be that you can look to see if you're looking for interviews and in that job search process. Well, maybe right now you're thinking, okay, if I'm in this major, I can only do this job. But this is a great way for you to maybe do some exploring on what are other people in your major doing. And so again, even, for example, at that University of Illinois webpage, not really webpage, but group, you can filter for your major, and then you can just quickly scroll through and see what are other people doing. And it might be an opportunity for you, either one, to be able to kind of see this career path that isn't always linear as far as for where they went and what they did, but also to give you ideas so that if you're currently in a panic of, I don't want to do that, to give you opportunity, to give you some ideas of what other things you might be able to do. Again, as far as for before the interview, we mentioned this, and even before career fair, any kind of networking event, looking on their LinkedIn page to see what are they sharing. For example, um, I can't think of what rail company, I think it was CN, that was, adver that was blasting up their feed for a while about how they were using drones to look at kind of the damage that different bridges were having. So that they could then decide what kind of repairs were needed, and this was one way that they were implementing technology, and it was a great, it was just something that they were really showcasing, and they were looking for CS majors. So that was something that I don't know that CS always says, oh, rail, right? But this was something that they were being intentional about pushing out. So it's something then where you can again, as you're going to talk to those employers, say, hey. I recently saw this. This is a really cool initiative. Can you tell me more about how I might fit with that? So again, also helps that it's not probably the question or comment that every other person in front of you on the line is talking about. 
unless it's all of you in the same line, and then you are going to know the tip to use LinkedIn, and then maybe. But a lot of times students aren't necessarily, we aren't necessarily using this tool to what it can be used for. And then again, you can also figure out the size of the company. And again, you can also be looking through companies. You can filter to see which alumni are working there. And it might even be that you're finding a connection of a friend from maybe a couple years ago that they started at one company, but they've moved. And so they're working somewhere else now. And then when you find that person before your interview, what, should you, what do you think I'm going to say you should do? You should reach out to them. So you can say, Hey, I, you can even LinkedIn message them. Hey, I, I saw that you're currently working for this company. I have an interview coming up. Would you be willing to talk to me about, you know, would you be willing to tell me what the interview process is like? Or is there anything I really need to make sure that I'm aware of before I walk into the interview? So using kind of that insider knowledge. Again, then, just another page showing that you know, sometimes companies are showcasing recruiter tips or they're talking again, posting specific positions through their LinkedIn channel. So it's important that you're actively engaged on LinkedIn. Now, another few pieces I wanted to share with you was kind of some information from Jobvite. So they do a recruitment assessment every couple of years. And one of the things that according to recruiters, the top investments for employers as they're growing their brand is social media. Of course, you can see their company website and advertising as well. But I think this is important for you to be aware of, that social media is a place that employers are investing their time. And so for you to be actively engaged with them on those social channels can be an added value for you. 77% of recruiters are focusing on LinkedIn. We're seeing a strong number in Facebook as well, and this isn't a cumulative number, as you can see, because they are over 100%. But another place where we're seeing employers think being intentional with where they're showing up is Instagram. So if you're currently an IG user and you are thinking that this is just another place for you that you could again be following employers and a way for you to see that they're using how they're using these social media tools. Now, a lot of times from a career services standpoint, when we talk to students, we tell you to lock down your social media accounts. And this is just something I want to remind you of because, of course, your LinkedIn profile should be public. It should also be, um, but there are uh, ads maybe you're following, let's say you're following other employers on, maybe it's Facebook or maybe it is Instagram. You're just being aware of the things that they're looking for. So you can see the good and the bad of what they're looking out for when they're doing those scans, when they're looking. And so, Again, just keeping in mind the engagement in your local organizations, examples of your work is really important and a feature that you can be using on LinkedIn. So feel free for those projects if you can share them to do that. They're also looking for mutual connections. If they see that you're connected with somebody they know, they're probably going to reach out to that person and say, hey, I, I see you know this person. Can you tell me more about that? You can, of course, see the bad things as well. So just be careful that you're not, you know, again, that you're being careful about what you're choosing to show on your social media. As far as for, again, those final tips just to encourage, to rem remind you of, you want to make sure that your profile is updated to the kind of code that we had mentioned before. You want to make sure that you're using your connections to U of I, and that can also include career services. So whether it's connecting with me and then seeing the different connections that I have and potentially connecting out, whether it's connecting with your classmates, your professors, certainly career fair, for example, employers don't typically give out business cards, oftentimes because the rule is what they do for one, they must do for all. Our career fairs are huge. About 6,000, 10,000 students are attending our fairs, and so they're not going to bring 10,000 business cards. But if you're, if you're able to you know, get their name and you already know, hopefully, remember the company, that can be something where you can connect with them later. And in the note, you can say, it's great connecting with you for a few moments at the career fair today or this week. You know, I'd appreciate the connection. Again, we talked about how you can learn more about the jobs and careers you're interested in. And the biggest piece is that you start connecting with people that your network on LinkedIn isn't going to grow until you start following people and connecting with them. 
But the other big piece, as we've already discussed too with LinkedIn, is that your maintenance is required. Um, one way you can be maintaining your LinkedIn is by congratulating people on success. LinkedIn does a great job of already notifying you of different ways that you can do that. LinkedIn has certainly become more social in nature as far as letting you know when someone has a birthday or how many years they've been working in a particular organization. So you can be just saying, congratulations on working at this company for three years. Um, so that's one way. Again, you can also be intentional with letting your former coworkers or teammates know if you accept a new job. That can just be, again, a way of maintaining it and keeping it kind of active. Follow up with people you meet at events like we talked about. And then check in with your former coworkers and classmates once every six months or so to see how they're doing. So that can be a way that, that sometimes, I've heard more than one story of a student who reaches out to someone, just even kind of like a generic message of, hey, you know, it's been a while, checking in to see how you're liking the job. And they might, and you know, your position. And they respond, maybe it's, oh, it's great, and our team is growing, and, you know, and how are things with you? Maybe you're not loving where you are. And so that person can say, that's really cool that you guys are growing. You know, I'm actually kind of in the market just to see what else is out there. This sounds really cool. Can you tell me about some other, you know, what, are, what would be the next steps for me? Well, now you have someone who might be able to speak to, oh, I had this, you know, he was on my team. He was a great worker. And so, and so from that, then, I've got a little, I've, I've been validated from someone who's already in at the company. So sometimes it can be about the network and the who you know. You're still going to have to prove yourself, right? You still have to go to the interview. You still have to take all the steps. This is one way then you can connect um, kind of, and maybe level up a little bit. So again, it can be worth the investment. Another piece that I think is really important that you are highlighting on your, on your LinkedIn page is your skills. So there are eight career readiness competencies defined by NACE. NACE is the National Association of Colleges and Employers. These eight skills, career services did not make up. It was the employers. And the top four of these eight that recruiters really are wanting are problem solving and critical thinking, communication, teamwork, and leadership. Those are the top four. So anytime you can highlight those, either on your LinkedIn account or also on your resume, you're going to want to do so. Career readiness you know, means that you have the skills needed for a successful transition into the workplace. You've currently had that experience this past summer, and so now as you're thinking about what have you done, thinking in these terms can be important as well. Now, maybe you're thinking, okay, well, I don't have any leadership, I didn't have any leadership skills this summer, I was an intern. But I want you to think about then maybe what this next year looks like for you. It could be through an RSO. It can be through your different team projects that you're doing and through your classes. And thinking about how are you highlighting those either on your resume or also how are you highlighting them on your LinkedIn page. Did you work with a team of three this summer or did you lead a team of three? Instead of just saying, I worked in a team, maybe we quantify the number of teammates that you worked with. Were they cross-functional? Was it cross-disciplinary teams that you were working with? Those are some pieces that you can be considering to do. If you're thinking about different examples that maybe you have been affiliated with, here are some ways that you can actually say these things. And those are really tiny, aren't they? <laughs> okay. So a research lab, perhaps you've been involved in a research lab for several years, and so you can say that you coached and trained three new lab assistants as they joined the study. Maybe you're a programmer, so you can talk about that you worked in a team of seven, uh, you worked in a team of seven others and communicated to management the presence of over 100 bucks in the new software suite. Maybe you are a leader in a, or in a registered organization on campus. And so you can say that you advance to a leadership position by taking on an additional five hours per week. These things are actually, these definitions, even if you're like, oh, that sounds good, I need to remember that, are at your fingertips at a website called careerservices.illinois.edu. The, the hashtag, the way you say it, is why we have created this 
website for you to see is because many students think, well, I have this experience, but is it really important? And we want to advocate that it is. Sometimes it can be one of these three things. Maybe you're a resident and maybe you're an RA, so you're a resident advisor. You don't really know how to highlight that. Or maybe you work during the school year. Maybe you're going to be here, but maybe previous experience, you were in, dining, in the dining halls. Those experiences, depending upon how we shape them and talk about them, can be valuable to employers when we think about, again, go reflect on those career readiness skills and what are they looking for. Any questions? Okay. So just as a reminder and a plug for ECS, of course, I want to remind you that ECS is available for you as far as for students. Um, as, and even a year after you've graduated, you can connect with us. So we talk about, like I mentioned, we do LinkedIn reviews, but we also can talk about career exploration. We can be intent, we can go and talk about the elevator pitch and okay, now what do I say to employers as I go and talk to them? Offer negotiation. If you're leaving this internship this summer and you already are being presented with an offer for full time, we can talk to you about how to strategize and negotiate that offer. We can talk to you about your, link, about your cover letter reviews, professional communication, kind of basically kind of anything that's career related. We can help navigate that for you, and we would we would welcome that. Another thing, just so I want since I have your attention, not only should you be um, updating your LinkedIn account after your experience this summer, but we also want to make sure that you are updating your Handshake account. Adding this information now is going to be important too, as employers are going to be getting more and more active on the platform to be posting opportunities. And you can already see a current running list of employers who are going to, who are planning to attend the career fair, so that's going to be important too. Another resource I want to make sure you are all aware of that we are just now rolling out, so it's a brand new feature, is something called VMOC. VMOC is a brand new, um, basically, it's an ATS, but a friendly one in a way. So anyone know what an ATS is? couple. An ATS is an applicant tracking system. Many employers use it. It's a machine. It is scanning your resume for keywords, and if you make the cut, you move on to the next line. And so we have chosen to purchase this program for our students to use, where you can then upload your resume. It's going to scan your resume, and instead of just saying either yes or no, it's going to provide you feedback of ways that your resume can improve. Now, this is not intended to replace any connection that you might have with our office, but it is a great resource as well because this one is not limited to 8 to 5, 830 to 5, which our office is. It's 24-hour access. So when you're up at 2 a.m. and you think, oh, I need to get my resume reviewed, you can actually go right here and, and have it quickly reviewed. We would also welcome and value your feedback with this platform. So if you get some feedback and you're like, well, I didn't really get why they said this, or I have, you know, I have complaints, or I, have, I really liked that they suggested this for my format, we are open to those. So don't feel like you have to stay angry and not share that feedback. Please provide it to us, and we'll continue to be working on it to make it better. But this is something that's brand new. You can absolutely use it. You just do vmoc.com and then forward slash ECS Illinois. That is a resource available to you right now. The other thing I would be remiss to, if I didn't mention would be what's coming. Anyone know what that is? Bum, bum. Yes, the Fall 2019 Career Fair. So that is happening September 10 and 11. It's 12 to 6 at the ARC. Obviously, as long as you haven't already accepted a position, we would encourage you to come and look for those future opportunities. But you've already really found the, the, you know, the gold mine here at Research Park. And the fact that you have a local connection where you are currently not that far from campus. Um, and that there are great opportunities, not only for your internships over the summer, but also for part, for, for part, no, not for that, for part time <laughs> employment. Um, during the school year as well. So while I did mention earlier that dining hall services does have, it is valuable, 
there's a moment, there's a shift. And what that means is if you have the option to go back to dining services or work at Research Park, which one is more valuable to a recruiter? <coughs> Research Park, right? You're doing probably more work that is in, that's related to where you're wanting to go. So there will be that moment where you're going to need to kind of analyze which direction is better for you. So just keeping that in mind. But yeah, it's going to be here before we know it, September 10 and 11, and career fair. So be ready for that. Otherwise, if there are no, are, are there questions about LinkedIn specifically, or if you have any afterwards, feel free to come up. I'm happy to talk with you one-on-one -on -one if you don't want to ask the entire group. And thank you so much for your time today and for being attentive listening, and have a great rest of your summer. Thank you.